So we're reviewing uh, the Dyball hydri uh, hydride mechanism, diisobutyl aluminum hydride mechanism here. So this is Dyball. Dyball specifically reacts with esters and it turns esters into aldehydes. So how does Dyball fit in? So lithium aluminum hydride is super reactive. So what it will do is turn esters into alcohols. Sodium borohydride is not reactive enough. It won't even react with esters. Dyball is this medium spot where it will react with esters but then stop at the aldehyde instead of going all the way to the alcohol. So what kind of process is this again? What kind of process would this be? If you look at that carbon versus this carbon, what's changed? You've less bonds of oxygen, you, re you reduce it, you've added hydrogen. There's a reduction, right? So I told you about three, right? We know three types of ways to do this. Lithium aluminum hydride, super reactive, going to take this all the way to the alcohol. Sodium borohydride, not reactive enough, won't react at all. Dyball is this middle spot where it's reactive enough to react to the ester, but then it'll stop before it goes too far. Good. So let's look at the mechanism here. The first step. The first step, I would think, is going to be actually a resonance structure, not even a reaction. Just a, thinking about the resonance form of an ester. So resonance arrow. So it's showing a resonance form of an ester. What's going to happen? This oxygen is going to react or interact or form a bond with aluminum, right? Because aluminum, does aluminum have a full octet right now? No, right? And it's in that third column, so it's missing a, right? So it's in that third, third period, column, period, right? So now what's going to happen to the aluminum here? Because remember all those other ones, lithium aluminum hydride, sodium borohydride, they all have that boron with a negative charge, aluminum with a negative charge that makes those H minuses more reactive, right? You notice this doesn't. But now, after it does this, where is there a minus charge? This is a plus charge. The minus charge is now on the aluminum. But where is the electron density really at? The oxygen and or the hydrogen or these carbons. But it's called diisobutyl aluminum hydride for a reason. So now there's two things, advantages that come here. We've made this reagent more reactive, right? And we've also made it so these molecules are combined, right? Now this is going to be an intramolecular reaction versus an inter between two molecules. So it's going to be much easier for this to react. So what's going to happen? There it goes. We do an addition. So electrons go up. O, A, L. There's a new hydrogen there. Next step. All right now, the next step will be we need to break this down. And the way we need to do that, we need to lose, right? we know we're getting to, trying to get to the aldehyde, so we know we need to lose this piece. So that's going to happen. Essentially, the electrons between this oxygen aluminum bond are going to come down and kick out right, the good leaving group. That's also going to give us, right, to balance our charge, it's an aluminum. The plus charge, but we also lost an O minus, and these two things are going to come together. And notice how now the aluminum hydride is done, right? How many how many re, how many aluminum hydrides how many hydrides do we have on there? Just the one, just the one. Also, notice can esters do resonance? Not like, or sorry, can aldehydes do resonance like esters? No. This was this resonance was the key to get this to be reactive. So the aldehyde is not going to doesn't have this kind of resonance structure. So even if there was this left around, it's not going to react with this.